the first thing I like to do is go in here to the materials and see what kind of materials we have. Or if I just want to go up here to library and just start typing stuff in, I can go check out paint. And now this is going to pick up everything, like smart materials and materials. But it looks like I got some good options in here. So I just do paint glossy. That looks like just a, just the materials. I'm going to double click that to download it from the cloud, grab paint glossy, and just dump it right over here. Or alternatively, if I know I want it to go on a particular ID, I can just drag it right onto that section of that ID. and start texturing it that way. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is I just dragged four paint glossies into separate sections. I didn't really wanna do that, so I'm gonna select all of these, hit delete. This mask right here is a color selection layer, so instead of doing dragging multiple times, I'm gonna drag once and then say, and then just color pick, add new, Now, one thing you're going to run into is you do have a threshold here. So if it's like, oh, it's the picking, it's picking up tires, and you can see it as I drop that threshold, it's going to drop some of these other areas. But there's two things. One, you can go back into ZBrush, and what I one thing I like to use is I'll load up just a swatches geometry I have. I'll just go to simple color swatches here, hit Control N, clear my canvas. Uh, I'll pull this over here to the side, go out of edit mode, go ahead and load up my truck here. And let's switch this over to like Skin Shader 4 to something light. And I'll go through here material by material and start filling this in. So if I tap C over the red and Alt tap any of these subtools or Alt tap any of the subtools in my viewport to select them, I can do Control Alt F, which is my hotkey I have set up for fill object. Of course, you can hold down Control Alt, tap anything in ZBrush, assign a hotkey, and you're good to go. So all of this metal stuff, I'm just going to fill with red. That should be the same material. As I work my way down the list, I'll tap C here, all the glass. Tap C again, all this chrome trim. And while I'm doing this, if I drag the color menu over here, you're going to see these are mathematically separated colors. Like this one is red is 255, well, close, 255.00. This one is 255.0.255. The blue is 00255. The cyan is 025255. So you're going to see I'm, I'm separating these out quite a bit. So when you go through and make your masks, it's a lot more accurate. You don't have to play with the threshold. You don't have to go in and clean up a lot of stuff. There we go. So now let's go up here, switch it to flat color, go back here to document, click custom one, make sure under our render properties everything's turned off so we can just hit BPR, dump this out as our new ID, you know what we'll call this ID, easy. So now when we go back in here, let's swap out this material ID, we can go ahead and kill all these, they're going to change anyways. So we'll throw in ID easy into our material ID. So now when I go in here and we have paint glossy selected with a color selection layer, say add new, go over here and just touch red, all the red gets selected, nothing else gets selected, the threshold is fine, and we're good to go. Now this paint uh, can change, it doesn't look that glossy to me, but you can go in here and change the contrast, pumps in a little bit of change there, but you can go through here and change this color. If that's not shiny enough for you, you can go through here and change that roughness. You can hold down shift and move your light around your scene. Go in here and take that uh, skylight, that child skylight that we put in there, and we'll manually go through here and crank up that brightness just a bit. There we go. Go click on our texture project again, and there's paint glossy. So what I can do is I can take this paint glossy layer, I can hit Control D or right click it and say duplicate. Uh, this one we're gonna call paint glossy red, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and say paint glossy orange. Now paint glossy red, we're just gonna select the material, change this so that it's more of a red color. And it's assigned to the exact same areas as my orange because it kept that color selection layer. So it's still selecting those areas in my mesh. However, on top of this, I can go in here and I can do a direction. So now we have a new direction layer. And right now it's overriding. Uh, so the direction layer where it's dark, you're not gonna see any red and it's gonna turn to orange, which is underneath it. 
if you set this mode to like multiply, it'll multiply the direction layer and keep your color ID. So that's really what I want to do. If again, if I have it standard, all of a sudden everything's getting red painted on it, not what I want. So we'll go ahead and again, set this to multiply so we're getting this direction result multiplied onto the color selection layer. So it's only going in here. Now it's going from like, like a sunburnt red down, but you can change that. So with the direction layer selected, you can change from up down, left to right, front to back, or custom. And in custom, you can go through here and literally just rotate this around. So you can actually get a pretty cool car paint look. Um, I think front to back worked okay. And go through here and just kind of crank up that custom. So that's a pretty neat look. And if you want to save all of this as a smart material, which you can see some of these have this kind of icon. If we go all the way down here to smart materials, these are all smart materials that have paint in them. And all they are is just a collection of stuff, layers uh, put together. And in fact, same thing for smart masks. Let's go ahead and get rid of paint here. Uh, here's some smart masks. All smart masks are, are if I was wanted to take both of these, right click and say save as smart masks or mask or export as smart masks, or select all of this, right click and say, save a smart material, export a smart material, uh, I can do that. Or I can just literally drag all of these into my smart material area and it'll allow me to save them. Now, I don't think it's that special, so I'm not gonna bother, but just to let you know um, that's a possibility. But here's the deal, we can also just go through here and add paint or scratches or metal to this. It's not a huge deal. Uh, so for instance, let's go through here, let's add another fill layer and I'm gonna separate this fill layer out just so it's by itself here. We'll call this dirt and in fact let's just go up here to our materials dirt area some really good looking dirt in here you know let's grab dirt and just drop that right into that material slot there and actually when i so uh, go ahead and delete that when i had the mask selected and i said add a fill it added a fill mask i think there we go so this is a fill layer i'm going to move this to the very top there we go. So now when I drop dirt right there, sorry about that, now everything's covered in dirt. Alternatively, I could have just said, you know what, drag dirt on any area of my car that I want to have it on. Of course, dirt is global. So instead of that, I'm going to delete that um, color selection layer and that out of there. Now I have dirt covering my entire car. Of course, one really easy thing I can do is I can go through here and I can say, give me a dirt processor. But first, I need to have this applied as a mask. So with dirt selected, go in here to mask, say add a fill mask black, and then drop in a dirt. This fill layer we don't need. So now dirt's being applied to my car. I can go through here and I can change the intensity of that dirt, the contrast of that dirt. If I don't want bump, big bumpy dirt on here, I can go back to my dirt layer and where it says bump, and actually it's not the bump method it's doing, it's this normal map. So you can just go ahead and check that off and then I get rid of that kind of uh, normal bump. Or if you don't mind a little bit of bump, you can just drag this contrast down and just kind of just make it slightly bumpy. So back to the dirt mask here. You see the dirt layer selected. Again, you can crank up that intensity of where that dirt's gonna end up, the contrast of the dirt. And again, where it's white is where dirt's gonna show up. Where it's black, it's gonna be clean. We don't have a grunge map plugged in, but if you wanted to break this up with a grunge map, just scroll down to where you have textures. There's a whole bunch of grunge maps in here, so you can just scroll back through here. Here's like a dirt surface. Just drop that right into your grunge. Grunge mode is set to multiply. So as I crank up that intensity, that grunge is gonna start eating away at some of these dark areas here. So you can use that as a way to kind of break up some of your dirt areas. Now we haven't even put other materials on here and the dirt really needs to be on top of all the materials. So let's go back to our materials here and let's just look through some of this metal. Chrome brushed will be pretty decent, so we're just going to drag this. Oops, double click it to select it. Drag that onto the blue sections of our car. I'm going to drop this underneath the dirt layer here. And if I ever want to change this, it says chrome brush, but I can say uh, I can drop chrome dirty in there. And all I need to do is replace this. So chrome dirty, I can drop right onto that material. That'll update everything else underneath it. And then I just need to rename this. I'm just going to drop the brushed part. Let's go down here to plastic. Take this plastic glossy, drop it right on the orange part here. Again, just drop that beneath the dirt. Let's change this color here. Now, there are clear coat shaders in Marmoset. You can go in here to the material, 
scroll down underneath the reflectivity and you have a bunch of clear coat options. However, it's gonna turn on clear coat for everything. If I had come in here with different material IDs assigned to each, you know, each different section of this image, I could do that. I could do glass, I could do car paint, I could do the rest. Uh, but since I just have one material, I don't want everything to have clear coat, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. But I just wanna let you know that was an option for you. Speaking of glass, let's uh, figure out a way we can maybe get some glass in here. Um, and also a floor plane. There's kind of a, there's an okay way where you can get a floor plane in here. You can go in here to scene, add object, shadow catcher. And then with that selected, you're gonna see I'm now casting a shadow underneath the truck. However, when I go to the front view, it's perfectly straight on, you're not gonna see it. So you have to take that shadow catcher plane, go in here and rotate it a little bit. So again, from this front view here, you can kind of just move and rotate the shadow catcher into place. Again, so you can kind of see it from that front view. Again, I what I prefer to do is just get a floor plane shadow from another renderer. That could be ZBrush, KeyShot, uh, using the actual model and just comp it into Photoshop. But just so you know it's available to you, you can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump the shadow catcher out of here. Uh, let's go back to our main camera again. X rotation here to zero, Y to negative 180. This is our image. Let's go into uh, rendering this image. And again, we wanna do a 1920 by 1080 image. So underneath the renderer, uh, let's go ahead and turn on use ray tracing. That'll give us a little bit more accurate reflections. And in fact, if you're ever doing like translucent stuff or transparent stuff, bump up your transmission to 12 um, and your bounce is like to three. And before I do that, let's, um, let's go back to our texture project here. One thing that I mentioned in earlier videos, I wanna make sure that uh, you're aware of. If I go through here and you know what, let's just take, um, I'm gonna go back down here to paint. Uh, we're gonna drop a paint cracked just in our layer stack over here. I'll move it up above plastic glossy. So now you have cracked paint everywhere. If I go through here and I say mask, paint mask black, and now I can have this paint layer, I can go through here and paint. Uh, so I'll choose, choose a paintbrush and hold down control and right click. You're gonna see it kind of paints a little bit weird. That's because this is a flat plane that I'm painting on with this placement map. So make sure with this brush selected, you go in here to tool settings, change alignment from tangent to screen, and now it should paint uh, about how you would expect. So in this case, you can go through here and you can paint, cracked paint all the way across this image. And again, while we're painting, we can go back to our scene, render, turn off use ray tracing, go back to our texture project. We have a brush selected already. So now we just go through here and start painting this on. Uh, again, if you go here to tool settings, this is where you can go in here and say, okay, turn on pin pressure uh, for maybe flow and size. You can put in a brush texture in here. If we go down here to brushes, we can use these brushes that'll cycle through basically a bunch of different sprites to get us uh, some randomization or also underneath organic brushes here, you can just drop in, double click these to download them, drop them right in here. And then you can have like a dirt brush you can paint with. You can control right click to make this bigger. Uh, so you can go through here and you can just start painting uh, different areas. So you don't have to rely on just input processors or anything like that. And there's a bunch of cool stuff in here too, like adjustment layers, hue, saturation, gradient maps. So if you ever wanted to change, you know, your dirt to be a different color, you just go right in here. You can change the hue. Now, when I start changing the hue, it's gonna change the hue of everything, which actually works really well. Um, let's say we wanted to, you know, keep that, and let's go ahead and get rid of this paint crack, we don't need that. So say we wanted to change the color of our car, and just for demonstration purposes, I'll move the chrome underneath here. Um, so I can go through here and I can change the color of our car, but it's also gonna change the color of our chrome, and I don't want that. Well, all I have to do is take all the stuff for the car paint, hit Control G, to put it in a group, or you can always right click that and say add to group. And then now the hue saturation layer can be added to this group. And now when I go through here and change that hue and satch, it'll go through and just change that car paint color. It'll leave the dirt and chrome and all that good stuff alone. So anyway, let's go back to classic so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, I'm gonna go up here to main camera, make sure I'm zeroed out, flip around, go back here to render, turn on use ray tracing, Right in here, the samples, that's just your viewport samples. If we scroll down, these are your render samples. So you can go ahead and crank this up. We can just bump that up to say 512. Uh, if you want to export this out with transparency, which we can do that. We'll go ahead and turn that on. We don't need the background or anything. 
resolution is already set to 1920 by 20 by 1080 in our images here. I do want to go back to camera and turn on safe frame. That's going to make sure that I'm not clipping uh, inadvertently any areas of my image. Now again, I don't know exactly where to place this to match the camera for ZBrush or later key shot, um, but that's okay. I can always fix it later in uh, Photoshop. So if I have this, I can go through here. And again, we can go through here and do post effects if you want to check out any of these and see. These give you a cool effect you want to keep. Or you can just manually go through here and change these uh, to whatever you'd like. But in our case, let's go back to render. Output images. It's going to throw it right on our desktop. You know what? Let's throw this where it's supposed to go. So here's all the truck maps. Let's right click a new folder in here. Call it comps. And we'll go ahead and name this. Hit render image. And there we go. There's our marmoset render. And again, uh, if you decide you wanted to change that light or change that environment setting, it's a very sunny. Um, you can go ahead and do that. You know what? I am going to move that light just a little bit. We'll go ahead and hit render image again. It is good. We have overwrite. Uh, we have overwrite existing off, so it's actually going to add a number to it, which is fine. We can keep both of these. Not a big deal. There's our rendered image. Let's go ahead and save. Let's hop back over to Substance Painter. 